we have looked extensively at the seven sacraments of the church, looking at their origins, their history, how they are offered, who rightly ministers them, who rightly receives them, and what their benefits are for us. In this video, I simply want to give a summary to help us to receive the sacraments well, to cherish them for the gifts that they are, and to recognize what our true goal in receiving them and living them really is, which is life with God. So let us take a look at a summary. To summarize the sacraments invites us to go all the way back to the beginning of our look at the seven sacraments and once more consider the definition. What are sacraments? Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1131, defines them as efficacious signs of grace instituted by Christ and entrusted to the Church by which divine life is dispensed to us. They are efficacious signs of grace, meaning that they, through the visible, perceivable realities of the sacraments, whether it be the waters of baptism or the words of absolution given in confession after one has confessed their actual sins, or the bread and wine that are consecrated and that become the body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and down the line, these signs, these Creatures that contain within them the grace of God are effective and efficacious in the sense that they contain the grace of God, that they draw us into God, and they give to us the life of God in our soul so that we can remain faithful in this life and be made ready for the perfect life of heaven. So they are efficacious signs. They are instituted by Christ inasmuch as he is the source of their power. His life, death, resurrection, ascension, and the gifting of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, what we call in summary the Paschal Mystery, it is from this that the sacraments truly are rooted and they gain their power, Jesus at work in them. And so they are instituted by Christ inasmuch as he is their source of power and their source of this efficacy that we talk about. They are entrusted to the church inasmuch as Jesus willed to create a church and that through the church the gift of his salvation would be offered to all of the world and that our partaking of the gifts of salvation, far from just a mental act of profession of faith or even just a verbal act of profession of faith declaring Jesus as our Savior that we actually receive from him the gift of his salvation through the sacraments, through baptism, through the Eucharist, through reconciliation, through anointing of the sick, that they are entrusted to the church to be the means by which humanity is drawn into Christ and truly brought into that union with him who then leads us and takes us to the Father, reconciling us with him. And of course, the sacraments dispense divine life. This is their true purpose, to give us the life of God in our souls, that we would be reconciled, that we would be drawn into communion and union with the Lord, and able to live for him and for him alone who is our true fulfillment and our true all. And so it is. Our definition provides in itself a good summary. But might we take it a step further? Might we see how in the sacraments, as I have sought to emphasize at times through these various videos, how the sacraments are relational? How, yes, it is all what God is doing on our behalf, but inasmuch as we receive the sacraments well, it is a call to relationship. God is always faithful, and he desires for us to be with him for all eternity in the life of heaven. But he is not forcing himself upon us, nor can he automatically bring us there. We, for our part, 
are called to open ourselves and to receive from the Lord what he offers and to accept it. And in accepting it, not just to take it and run, but acceptance meaning that we receive the grace of the sacraments and live in accord with it, being drawn daily and throughout every day into deeper union and communion with the Lord, seeking when we are baptized as the beginning, which forgives us of sin, to continue to live a life free from sin, seeking every time we make a good confession, not only to be forgiven of our past sins, but to leave them behind and to, through our firm purpose of amending our life, seeking to live true to who the Lord calls us to be, once more free from sin and not allowing sin to rule over us, but to live for God and to live for heaven. And through the Eucharist, which is truly the sacrament of sacraments, that it is God giving himself, literally, body, blood, soul, and divinity to us, and that we, for our part, when we receive the Eucharist in the right disposition, meaning the right state in life, meaning without a mortal sin upon our soul, but in a state of grace, that we, for our part, are being drawn into a communion, as we would call our reception of the Eucharist, so deep, so intimate, that we become as one flesh with the Lord. But once more, this is not an automatic thing, that we don't simply receive our communion and then we're done. But it's a call to a way of life. It's a call to constantly opening of ourselves, to deeper communion, to more perfect communion, and learning to offer ourselves, as the Second Vatican Council referred to, actually participating in the liturgy, learning to humble ourselves before the Lord so that he can come to us, fill us, and that we, as members of his bride, the church, would respond in love, the two of us becoming as one. Such is the nature of the relationship. And so when it comes to summarizing the sacraments, it would be my hope and prayer that through all of these various video installments, while there has been much in the nature of teaching and doctrine that has been shared in terms of what the sacraments are, who ministers them, how they're rightly received, what the matter of the sacrament is, what the form of the sacrament is, all of these important truths that explain and express what a sacrament is, that we see that at the very heart of the matter, and truly as the foundation of it, is the love of Jesus Christ, a love that offered himself totally and perfectly for us, and that invites us to learn to love him in return, and to continue to be aided in that love. Because here too is how the sacraments are so beautiful and powerful, that each and every time we partake of a sacrament, for whatever the sacrament is, minding that some of them give particular graces for timely help, such as anointing of the sick, for those who are suffering from a debilitating illness, that this grace for timely help is always an invitation to deeper faith, deeper trust in the Lord, giving ourselves over to him. And it is here that I want to share a, a insight that I believe is untapped in the mind of the church. And that is the fact that if we want a real model for how to receive the sacraments and how to participate in the sacraments, we need to look no further than the Blessed Virgin Mary. And while some might say, well, that's not a good example because we don't have any record of her in the scriptures that shows her receiving the sacraments, we want to acknowledge, first of all, that did she receive the sacraments? Absolutely, because of course she lived after our Lord ascended to heaven for the time that she did, still on this earth, and would have been part of the early church. So she would have been part of the breaking of the bread of the Eucharist, and she would have been part of this early and very initial liturgical life of the church. And to that degree, Sure, she participates as a member of the church, but going beyond and going more deeply, we need to look no further than her Annunciation. Recall this story of the Annunciation, 
the angel Gabriel comes to her with the great gift that God has called her to the motherhood of Jesus Christ, that she would be mother of God. And when we consider how she reacted in this moment, at first, of course, she was confused. How can this be since I have no relations with a man? In the end, she was totally receptive. And in her receptivity, it wasn't a matter of being passive. She was very active because, of course, her saying yes, her words, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word, are words of response, words of active participation or actual participation, as we can better translate it, in the great gift of salvation. She received from the Lord what he himself willed to give her, and she acted upon it. And this is what you and I are called to as disciples, and especially in the sacraments. And why, if I might emphasize the Holy Eucharist that in this example, that you and I, every Holy Communion, can be like that of Mary. Every Holy Communion can be an opportunity of allowing the Lord to come to us as he wills through the Eucharist, and to seek to perfectly open ourselves with the greatest and utmost humility, learning to say, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word, or I am the servant of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word, or in the single word that we actually use at the Holy Mass, that when we say our Amen to the Holy Eucharist, it would be one of total receptivity, but not a passive receptivity, one of total awareness of the great gift that we receive in Jesus Christ, so as then to respond and to give him our whole being through our fidelity to our call, our fidelity to what today brings us, whatever that today will be, that Mary would be our model of such participation. And in this way, all seven sacraments call us to relationship. So they are mo far more than something we do for God's sake. But likewise, they are not just automatic insofar as while God is always faithful and when the sacraments are carried out, they are true and the very grace of God is made present by them being done or ex opere operato. While we acknowledge these truths of faith, we also want to acknowledge that God waits for us and he invites us to be in relationship with him that we would be in true communion, and such is made available in the seven sacraments. And so, may we continue in our faith journey, acknowledging the beauty of what we have already looked at in these sacraments, a beautiful call to deepened relationship, and that each and every time we receive or are renewed in a sacrament, as sometimes, of course, we receive renewals of our baptismal promises, let's say, on Easter, Every opportunity for such renewal or receiving again is an opportunity for deeper relationship that we would be one with the Trinity who desires and loves us with his whole being so as to take us to himself in the eternal communion for which we were made. May God bless you.